Ramadan online. Stay connected to the East London Mosque. East London Mosque and London Muslim Centre would love to say thank you to the following businesses and charities for sponsoring our Ramadan Online 2021 program. Islamic Relief, Muntad Aid, Global Relief Trust, Penny Appeal, Muslim Aid, Human Relief Foundation, Muslim Burial Fund, Irani Taylor Solicitors, City Realtor, AWMA Architecture. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, today I'll be talking about how to strengthen iman through Ramadan, inshallah. Um, the first question that comes to mind is what is the connection between iman and Ramadan? And then we look at how do we strengthen our iman through Ramadan. So the first question, what is the connection between iman and Ramadan? We find two connections, broadly speaking. The first one is mentioned in the Sahihain, in, in Bukhari and Muslim, um, in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu an. He says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man qama Ramadana iman and wahtisaban, ghufir alahu ma taqaddam min zambi." Whoever fasts Ramadan, iman and with iman, ihtisaban, expecting a reward from Allah subhanahu wa taala. غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ His previous, his sins are forgiven, right? Whatever sins that came before him, they are all forgiven. So here we see that the connection, Iman and Ihtisab. Iman is mentioned specifically with this act of fasting. And that's not usually done in other ibadat, you know, zakah or salah. Iman is not always mentioned like this so directly. And even we know the variations. من قام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنب. Same same kind of uh, condition there of إيمان and احتساب. Whoever stands in prayer for Ramadan at the nights in the nights with إيمان and احتساب, again faith and expecting a reward from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. All his sins are forgiven. And the same variation for Laylatul Qadr. Is there as well? Iman and Ihtisab is mentioned. Whoever stands for the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, Iman and Ihtisaban, all his sins are forgiven. So this is first connection we find very directly that the sins are forgiven for the person who fasts or stands in prayer throughout Ramadan or stands in Laylatul Qadr with Iman. So there's a strong connection here. The second connection we find is in the Quran, which is. Connected to taqwa, as we all know, as everybody knows, the purpose of Ramadan and the conclusion or the result of Ramadan is meant to be a taqwa. Ya ayyuha al-ladina amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyamu, kama kutiba ala al-ladina min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. So, O oh, you who believe, fasting has been written upon you as it was written or uh, commanded for those before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may gain taqwa, so that you may be people of taqwa. So here the taqwa is mentioned as the goal of Ramadan, the conclusion of Ramadan. What we're meant to aim for in Ramadan to achieve as a result of fasting and praying, we're meant to achieve the state of taqwa. But to get to taqwa, what, who is a person of taqwa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah that Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. That Alif Lam Mim, this is a book in which there is no doubt. هدى للمتقين, guidance for those who have taqwa. Guidance for those who have taqwa. Then it carries on. Who are these people of taqwa? الذين يؤمنون بالغيب. Those who have faith, iman. Those who have iman in the غيب. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And the verse goes on. And those who establish the prayer and pay the zakat, pay the charity of zakat. Um, and then it carries on. Those who believe in that which has been revealed to you and those who believe in that which was revealed to you and that was, which was revealed 
before you. And in, uh, the ayah ends with that they have yaqeen in, in the akhirah. وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوْقِنُونَ With the akhirah, about the hereafter, they have certainty, they have certain faith about the hereafter. So here we find that the people of taqwa, if you want to know who are the people of taqwa, what are, what are their characteristics? They are the people who have iman in, in the unseen, the ghayb, that which they have not seen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have iman in Allah, they have iman in the angels, they have iman in the hereafter, the day of judgment. They have iman in all those things that they don't see. And because of their iman, it f leads them to salah, it leads them to charity, it leads them to prayer, it leads them to charity, to spend from what they've been given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the verse goes on, they believe in what has been revealed to you, uh, i.e. the Qur'an. They believe in the Qur'an and all the books previous to that. And about the hereafter, they have a certain yaqeen, a faith that is certain. They have yaqeen, they have certainty. They are sure about the hereafter, the day of judgment. So we find that the people of taqwa are the people of iman. So this is in the, the second way, uh, it's connected to Ramadan. Ramadan is meant to achieve taqwa for us. Ramadan, we're meant to achieve taqwa. And the people of taqwa are described as those who have iman in the ghayb, iman in the hereafter, and iman in, which, in that which was revealed i.e. the Qur'an, and we know the Qur'an was revealed in the month of Ramadan. So here we find the second connection uh, with Iman and Ramadan, right? In other words, the people of Taqwa, those who have a firm Iman in these things, in the Ghayb, in the Hereafter, in the Revelation, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the people of Taqwa, because once you're convinced, once you're certain that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to account on the day of judgment. Once you're certain this dunya is temporary, it's only a short time. Once you're certain about your purpose in life, why you've been sent here to, for ibadah, ubudiyah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you're certain your actions, your speech are being recorded, being written down to be presented to you on the day of judgment, then this will lead you to act. And this was, we'll come back to that inshallah. So we've, connect, we've established the connection with Iman and Ramadan, Iman with Taqwa, which is the goal of Ramadan. But what is Iman? What is Iman? Everyone knows the basic formula, right? But not all of us reflect fully on the meaning of Iman. One big issue that you'll find, you'll hear people saying often, I, I believe in Allah, I'm a Muslim, you know, I believe in uh, the Prophet ﷺ, I believe in the Qur'an, but I'm not that religious. You know, I believe in these things, but I'm not that religious. Or they'll say, you know what, brother, Akhi, I believe in Allah, I'm a Muslim, but it's in my heart. Don't judge me. You know, I, I, I don't have to do all the, I don't have to follow all the rules. Basically, what is it between me and Allah? That's between me and Allah. I just have Iman, I love Allah, and that's it. I don't have to pray, I don't have to fast, I don't have to pay zakah. That these rules doesn't matter if I don't follow them, right? As what matters is, I love Allah, I have Iman in my heart. So the basic concept of Iman, which is a mis misconception as well, is that Iman is something secret, hidden in the heart, and it has no connection to how you behave, what you do. So basically you can be a Muslim, a good Muslim, in, in fact, in the eyes of some, you can be a good Muslim and not pray, not fast, because why? You have Iman, I, I, I believe in Allah, I love Allah, that's what matters, right? Uh, I've, you know, people say, I've got a good heart, right? This is what they'll say, as long as I'm good in my heart, that's the main thing, my heart is pure. Then they're, they're, they're only partially right, this is the problem, they're only partially right. Iman is much more than that. Yes, the place of Iman is in the heart, without a doubt. But that's not the full picture of Iman. Iman doesn't mean that you believe in Allah and you don't follow any of His rules. The definition of Iman, if we go to that first, according to the vast majority of scholars of the Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, is that it is Tasdiq, first of all, is Tasdiq bil Jinan or bil Qalb. So, first of all, it's a firm, it's an affirmation, right? It's making, is believing, true belief in the heart, right? 
This is the first part of Iman. The second part is to testify on the tongue. Right? وَقَوْلٌ بِالْلِسَانِ So to testify or إِقْرَارٌ بِالْلِسَانِ To testify on the tongue, meaning to say the shahada. So this is, so we have two. The first one is a firm faith in the heart. Iman, a true belief in the heart. You believe in your heart, you believe in Allah, you believe on the day of judgment, you believe in the books, you believe in the angels, you believe in the truth of Islam, truth of the messengers. This is in the heart. Then the second part of Iman is testification. You testify, shahada, you say it on your tongue, right? The third part is the, the important part. These two are okay, but that's not the complete Iman. The third part, what they say is وَالْعَمَلْ بِالْجَوَارِحِ وَالْأَرْكَانِ The third part is action, deeds, right? So the first part is Iman, faith, uh, true belief in the heart. The second is testification on the tongue. And the third is action on the limbs, meaning you act it out, you implement it. Iman has to manifest through your actions, right? In what you say, what you do, right? In where you go, how you transact with people, right? Iman has to manifest in your salah, physical action, hajj, in, in Ramadan, in praying charity, in zakat, in speaking the truth in avoiding backbiting and things like that. So the Iman has, is a three-dimensional thing. It has its place in the heart, which is its starting point, right? You believe in the heart. Then it manifests on your tongue, verbally, in speech. You bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad Wasallam is his messenger. But the last one, which is the bigger portion of it, is amal, is action, is deeds. So no one can say, um, it doesn't matter as long as I believe. No, you, you haven't truly believed. If you think you don't have to act according to your Iman, if you think you don't have to follow any of the rules of Islam, you don't have to follow the guidance of Islam, you know, as long as it's in my heart, that's fine. That's a complete erroneous belief. Because Imam al-Shafi'i, listen to what he says. He's, he gives a slightly different definition, but it's more or less the same thing. He says, Iman is qawlun wal amalun wal niya. Iman is to say, it's, it's the speech, i.e., the testification, shahada, and its action, deeds, and niya. Again, the place in the heart, intention. And he says, these three things, you cannot replace one for the other. The intention you can't replace by your tongue, because somebody could say the shahada. But he doesn't mean it. He doesn't have the intention. Then he said you can't replace any one of these three things with the other. You can't substitute it. So you can't say, I'm not going to pray, I'm not going to fast, which is the amal, the deed, because I have iman in my heart. Right? I have already testified shahada, but I'm not going to pray, I'm not going to fast, I'm not going to pay zakah. No, you can't do that. All three are necessary to complete the picture of iman. So as we can see, there's a strong relationship between Iman and Amal, between action and faith. There is a strong, it's not just a strong connection. In fact, Amal, deeds, actions are a part and parcel of Iman. They're an integral part of Iman. They are part and parcel of Iman. You cannot separate them. And not because... You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions often, that's why he mentions often in the Qur'an, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believed, those who have believed, and do righteous actions, do good deeds. عَمَلْ صَالِحَ So, when these two come together, you may think, when you read it, you may think they're separate. One is that you believe, and the next one is you do good actions. But no, what the Mufassirun, what the scholars say, is that the good actions are tafsil of Iman. The good actions are a detailed explanation. They are a part of Iman. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, those who have believed includes amal, includes actions. But to make it even more clearer so there's no misconception, he says that those who have believed and do right actions, meaning don't forget 
that your claim to Iman, or if you've believed and you say you're a believer, then that includes good actions. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it absolutely clear by mentioning it separately. So it's like if you've believed, those who have believed, because they believe, they do right actions. Meaning it's part and parcel of the same thing. Their Iman leads them to action. They have no choice. There's, there's no separation. But because people may misinterpret, people may forget, people may not pay attention, it's made absolutely clear. Those who believe and do good action, meaning the amal comes with it. It's an explanation of what Iman is. What is Iman? Iman is a manifestation on your body, on your limbs, of righteous deeds, of good action, according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ That uh, from amongst the people, there are those who have taken, set up rivals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they love them like they've set up uh, rival gods. They've made human beings or they've made statues or idols, rivals to God, set them up as partners or rivals to God. And they love them as they should love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ Those, but those who believe, those who believe, who have Iman, they are more intense in their love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So see how the love has, is a result of the Iman. So love is an action, it's a deed, a deed of, of the heart, right? It's an action of the heart. Although it's internal, but I'll come to how it displays ex externally as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the people of Iman, because of their faith, it leads them to have a even more intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than those who are setting up rivals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their love for those idols or rivals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي This makes it absolutely clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet to say to the believers, to say to the people that if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَاتَّبِعُونِي then follow me, meaning follow the Prophet So it's very clear, Iman leads to love, intense love. But if you claim you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you say, I have Iman, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I'm not going to do everything in Islam, I, I'm too lazy or I'm too weak, or I don't have to do it because as long as I'm good in my heart, I'm pure in my heart, that's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear. He says to the Prophet I'm here, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ الله. Say indeed if you truly believe in, if you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me. يُحْبِبُكُمُ الله. Allah will love you. If you follow him, meaning, what, is, what does follow, follow me mean? It means follow his guidance, follow his sunnah. Whatever he's made halal for you, make halal. Whatever he's made haram for you, make haram for yourself. Stay away from that which was prohibited. Do the things, implement the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Messenger وسلم, has commanded us to do. So it's very clear that if you claim love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it must lead to ittiba' to following the Prophet وسلم, which means actions, deeds, righteous actions, good deeds. This is very clear. So it's very clear that true Iman must lead to good deeds, must lead to righteous actions. Then the question comes, we look around us, all around us, in, and we look to ourselves as well. It's not just others. We look around us, but we look first of all, first and foremost, to ourselves. But the whole community, the whole ummah, if this is the case, Iman is meant to lead to amal, to action. Why are we in this state? Why do we see people claiming Iman, but yet they don't do the action, or they don't pray, they don't do the pillars, the five pillars of Islam? the basics, or if they do some of the basics, they don't do most of the other things, or they're not living a life according to the guidance of Islam. Why is there a disconnect, a dissonance between Iman and action? That's the big question. If Iman is meant to automatically or force you or necessitate action, what's gone wrong? What happened? First of all, we have to understand that Iman without irada, 
is not going to help you. What do I mean by that? Iman without a firm will, right? A decisive will to act is not going to help you. And we can illustrate this with the example of shaitan. He had, he didn't have to have iman, he was in paradise, according to majority of scholars who say uh, Adam alayhi salam, his place was in Jannah, right? According to the vast majority. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him. So shaitan Iblis, he knew, he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, addressed him. He knows the unseen, he's, he's seen the unseen. What is unseen to us, he's seen that. He knows the truth of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows the truth of the creation of Adam alayhi salam. He witnessed all of that. So he had yaqeen, he had certainty, right? But did it lead him? Did he have the irada? Did he have the will to act in accordance to obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did he have the will to act according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling him to do? No, he didn't. This is the big problem. So even though he's seen what we have not seen, he's heard what we have not heard, but he still ha didn't have the decisive willpower to obey the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what's happening with us. We know the truth of the Qur'an, we know the truth of the Sunnah, we know the truth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know Allah will take us to account on the Day of Judgment. We know all of these things, but we haven't got the irada. We don't have the will, the decisive, the azm, the decisive decision to act in, in accordance to what we know. This is the major problem that we're facing. So yaqeen, without this decisive action, right, without this decision, a firm decision to act in accordance to what I know, is, is useless because it's just information. It's just information. There's no action built upon it. So we are prevented. What prevents us from this firm decision to act? We know what prevented shaitan, arrogance, kibr. He was too arrogant to allow Adam alayhi salam to be someone that he should bow down to. It's kibr, arrogance. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat Adam alayhi salam in his eyes better than him? It's arrogance that prevented him from having a firm decision to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We as human beings, we have four reasons or four enemies that prevent us from understanding or from deciding to act in accordance to our iman. Those four enemies are the dunya, not all of the dunya, but the, the temporal fleeting nature, the delusional nature of the dunya. Number two, the nafs, ourselves basically. Number three, hawa, it's our lower base desires, right? And number four, shaitan himself. So these are the four things that prevent us, even if we know the truth of the Qur'an, we know the truth of the Prophet ﷺ. We know the truth of the Day of Judgment. We know we have to die. This past year, many, many people passed away. I'm sure everybody knows somebody who has passed away, either in their family, relatives, friends. Everybody's seen it in front of their eyes, young, old, doesn't matter, male, female. Everyone knows somebody who has passed away. Yet, we still don't make that decision. Why? We're prevented by these four things. The life of the dunya the fleeting life, the attraction of living longer, of amassing wealth, of gaining, competing with others, buying more stuff, material stuff, owning more things, right? Our self, our nafs itself, you know, there's a battle that we have with the nafs itself. It leans towards disobedience, towards laziness. It has both sides, but it can take you towards laziness, disobedience. It likes to relax. It, li it doesn't like hard work, right? And then the hawa, the, the lower desires of, of uh, sexual desires, of consumption, right? These are the things that prevent us. And shaitan himself, who whispers, who, who, who pr prods us to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the four things that prevent us from being able to translate our iman, our knowledge, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Qur'an, of, of, of Prophet sallallahu into action. These are the things that prevent us from turning that into action. Now, Ramadan comes. Ramadan is here. Ramadan comes to rescue us from these four enemies. 
and this is how it's related to Iman. This is how Iman is strengthened in Ramadan. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a month. He's saying, He's given us this month and He's taken away those four enemies. The dunya, not, He's not taken away completely, but He's minimized, He's decimated their impact. He's weakened their impact. Or He's removed, in some cases, their, their, their effectiveness, if you like. If you look at dunya, most people in Ramadan, they change their focus, without a doubt. You have less time for the dunya. Many households, the TVs are off. Many people turn to the masajid. Many people turn to the Qur'an. Many people turn to ibadah. So Ramadan deals with the dunya straight away. Uh, we focus less on the dunya in Ramadan, and we focus automatically on the akhira. Number two, the nafs. The nafs and hawa, two and three. The nafs and hawa. These two things are fueled by food and drink, right? Food, drink, and sexual relations. What does Ramadan do? It comes and it breaks, or it doesn't break it completely, but it subdues and puts under control those desires of the self and of the hawa. So food, drink, sexual relations are not allowed during the daytime of Ramadan, as everyone knows. So this brings, this gives you the ability to control your nafs, to control your hawa. So there again, that enemy, those two enemies are dealt with. That's three enemies, dunya, your nafs, yourself, and your desires. Three things are dealt with already. Shaitan, as everybody knows, shaitan, the shayateen are locked up. As soon as Ramadan comes, the doors of Jannah are opened, the doors of the hellfire are closed, shayateen are locked up, are chained. So the fourth enemy is gone too. So all these four enemies that prevent us from translating Iman into action are completely under control in Ramadan. Now, this will only help us if we are consciously aware of this. If we go through Ramadan, like some, you know, people ask, why is it if shaitan's locked up, we're still lazy, we still commit sin, we still don't... Well, that part is about you. That's completely down to you. Now you know shaitan's not affecting you. It's the effects that he's had outside of Ramadan, they're still taking place now. It's like when you uh, wind up a, a clockwork toy. You just wind it up and then leave it. It'll run by itself. This is what's happening. In Ramadan, if we're still struggling to uh, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it's the impact of 11 months of shaitan and the dunya, and the nafs, etc. But anyway, in Ramadan, at least these four things, the impact is minimized if only we fast with iman and wahtisaban. If only we fast with faith, as, the, as I began in, in, in the beginning of the talk, if we man sama Ramadana iman and wahtisaban. If whoever fasts Ramadan with iman, with faith, and ihtisab, expecting a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in other words, they're fasting consciously, with awareness, with their mind present. Meaning, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why am I doing it for the sake of Allah? I want to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. But also, to be the pe pe from amongst the people of taqwa. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا عَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So, if I'm going to be of the people of taqwa, I'm going to fast during the daytime with an awareness and a conscious awareness of my ibadah. That all day I'm in ibadah. That will help me to uh, strengthen my iman because those obstacles are not there now. And you'll find everybody finds it easy. We see the proofs in front of us every day and every night. Why are the masajid full, packed? Two jamaas, three jamaas. Why are all the masajid packed in Ramadan? Why is it that everyone finds the irada, the willpower, the decision-making capability in Ramadan to come for Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Maghrib, Isha, Taraweeh, all the prayers. Why is that? That is the proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has defeated your enemies for you. And therefore you're able to make that decision. Therefore you're, it's easy for you to, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by you increasing your actions, you are increasing and strengthening your Iman. 
So, in terms of specific tips to strengthen Iman in the month of Ramadan, what can we do? After we know the connection between Iman and Ramadan, as I mentioned right in the beginning, that those hadith about sins being forgiven, if you stand up in prayer the whole of Ramadan at night, or if you uh, fast the month of Ramadan, or if you stay, in, stay up in prayers in Laylatul Qadr, it's all connected with the phrase Iman and Wahtisab, and that's the connection. And second connection, we said that Ramadan is meant to result in Taqwa, and we said the people of Taqwa are described as those with Iman in the Ghayb, in the unseen, and Iman in what has been revealed to the Prophet and what has been revealed before him, those who establish Salah and pay their charity or zakah, and those who have Yaqeen in the Akhirah. So that's how it's connected. Now, what are the specific tips for you and I in Ramadan? What can we do to strengthen our Iman consciously? Now we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subdued those four enemies that we have. How can we strengthen our Iman? Because outside of Ramadan, I, even in Ramadan, but outside, Iman goes up and down. Because the definition of Iman, those three things I said, but they also add, وَيَزِيد بِالطُّعَى وَيَنْقُصْ بِالْمَعْصِيَةِ Iman increases with obedience, and it reduces or decreases with sins and disobedience. So what can we do in Ramadan, specifically to strengthen this Iman, and to bear, take the fruits of, of this kind of special condition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us with by defeating our enemies, by, by controlling the four enemies that prevent us from increasing our good deeds and iman. The first thing, as I mentioned, is the fasting consciously. Most, as the Prophet said, there are some people who fast, but they gain nothing but hunger and thirst. They gain nothing but hunger and thirst. And the Prophet said, that Allah is in no need of you giving up your food and drink if you don't give up false speech and acting by falsehood. So we, we clearly know fasting is not about just the external giving up the food and drink. No, fasting is more than that. Fasting is also being consciously aware that you're giving up food and drink for the sake of Allah and therefore you're in ibadah and therefore you are also giving up other things. You're giving up false speech, you're giving up backbiting, you're giving up eating from the haram, you're giving up drinking from the haram, you're giving up earning from the haram, as much as possible. Nobody is going to do everything in one month. But you have to be conscious that, let's not, like the Prophet said, as-sawmu jannatun. The fast is a shield. And they said, don't, don't make a hole in the shield, don't pierce the shield. Don't break this shield, because this shield will protect you from the hellfire. But you will break the shield and you will make holes in the shield if you start lying, if you start backbiting, if you start oppressing somebody, doing injustice to somebody else, if you start earning haram, etc, etc. So the first step, first tip is to fast consciously. Be aware throughout the day that you're fasting, you're in ibadah. The second thing is to improve our salah. This is the second thing that will improve our Iman and strengthen our Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes, makes the foundation of this deen in Surah Al-Baqarah on, on two things, Salah and Sabr. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. Right? The, all you who believe, seek my help and victory and assistance with sabr and salah, two things. These are the two foundations of the deen. Salah connects you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salah is the connection, is your communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so of course your iman is going to increase. But again, we have to do salah with, with conscious awareness. Yes, it's not about quantity of taraweeh, how many we do and you know how many rakat we can, we can manage in the whole month or trying to attend every jama'ah in the masjid, those things we should try as best as we can. But the key thing is quality. To understand in salah, what am I reciting? To understand a little bit, what is the imam reciting? To, to have that presence of mind that I'm standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I'm submitting, surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when my head goes onto the ground, this is the closest it can be 
the nearest it can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the mentality, the state of mind, the state of our iman will increase if we pray like this and if we have a commitment to uh, attend as many prayers in Jama'ah as, and to pray the Qiyamul Layl. The Prophet it was made obligatory on him to pray Qiyamul Layl from, from the beginning because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is the best thing that will help you bear the responsibility of wahi, of revelation. So this is the most strengthening thing. It strengthens the iman, the prayer at night. Thirdly, zakah and charity. This is the month that all Muslims, we know, they pay much more charity in this month compared to the rest of the 11 months. So we should try and increase our charity, our sadaqah. And if we have, uh, if we're eligible to pay zakah, we need to pay the zakah. Sadaqa itself is a proof of Iman. They say Sadaqa, the word it comes from truthfulness, right? To be truthful to your Iman. You made a claim, you believe in Allah, then let me see you give your wealth away, right? Like Umar radiallahu an, like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhum. They gave their wealth away. Why? Because they had Iman, they had firm conviction that they're not losing this wealth. The Prophet some said, that charity does not decrease your wealth. One of the meaning is that in the hereafter, you will gain that back many, many fold over. So if we have Iman, then we should be able to give charity because we have Iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment will pay all that back to us many, many fold, much, much more. And charity is so beneficial. The Prophet some said, save yourselves from the ha uh, hellfire, even with half Shikh uh, Tamar, half a date, even with half a date. Half a date is worth, what is it worth today? Nothing. Three pence, two pence, half, one pence. With that, you can save yourself from the hellfire. So the charity extinguishes the fire of the hellfire. So this is the third thing which will increase our iman. Because when we give, we know we are getting reward in the hereafter. And we know we will get this back from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is faith, that is putting trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He will provide for us. Your, your, your charity will not reduce your rizq. And the last thing, uh, which is the Qur'an. This is the month of Qur'an, Shahru Ramadan, الذي أنزل فيه Qur'an. The month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an was revealed. And the month of Ramadan is one where we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best remembers, dhikr, strengthens iman. The best dhikr, as they said, is the Qur'an. It's the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no better dhikr, there's no better reminder, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the Qur'an. Again, it's not about quantity. Don't think, you know, don't be of those people who do two khatams, three khatams, right? Or even a whole khatam, one khatam. But they don't understand anything. They just read. Alhamdulillah, they get reward for that. But that's not the point. That's not gonna. That's not gonna necessarily strengthen your iman in the way it should do, the way the Quran should do, as the way Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says when the Quran is being recited, their skins soften, you know, their hairs stand up. There is an impact. Why? Because of the meaning. So even if you recite less, you do fifteen juz, ten juz, eight juz, but you do it with meaning. Read the translation along with the recitation. Read and reflect, think, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling me? What is He asking me? And the Qur'an you will see on every other page, on every page, you will see the Qur'an's priority is completely different to my priority and your priorities. The Qur'an's priority is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an's priority is the hereafter, the next life, success, eternal success, the Jannah and how to save yourself from the hellfire. The, the lessons of the past, the prophets who came, the people who disobeyed them, the people who obeyed them. What are the lessons in that? The commands to, to establish salah, to pay zakah, to, to, to be good to other people. So the, the Qur'an's priorities, you will see on every other page, is all about reducing our focus on the dunya, all about reminding us of the temporary nature of the, of the dunya and focusing ourselves to the eternal uh, nature of the akhirah, the most important thing, that which is far, far greater than this temporal uh, dunya. Again, 
that will what is iman but but iman in the unseen what is faith except that it is faith in the unseen and the quran is talking all the time about the unseen the quran is every page is talking about the unseen and therefore if you think and reflect if you understand if you follow the quran it will be deeply embedded in your spirit in your veins in your cells uh, the, 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 the presence of the Akhirah, the reminder of the Akhirah, your life will be focused towards the Akhirah. Your life will be Allah-focused, Allah-centered. So this is really important. The month of Qur'an, we must, must read the Qur'an and understand it rather than focusing on quantity. Even if you're standing 20 raka'ah in Taraweeh and you do a whole khatam and you didn't understand anything, subhanAllah, that's, you're going to get reward for the prayer, you're going to get reward for listening to Qur'an. But is it impacting you? Why is it so many people after Ramadan, partly it's natural that we go back to basics, back to square one. Why is it the massage is empty? One of the reasons is because those four enemies, they're back. After Ramadan, those four enemies are back to their full power again. But our situation should be that in this month, we have strengthened our Iman so that we don't fall back, right back to square one. We will reduce, that's natural. We can't keep up the same as Ramadan. But we fall a little bit. We reduce a little bit. And we, we go back to a higher stage than we were at the beginning of Ramadan. And that can only happen if we have that relationship with the Qur'an. If we're making the Qiyam at night. If we're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we're sacrificing some of our sleep. That will happen if we're really focusing on our ibadah with conscious awareness. So in this way, these four things, inshallah, will strengthen our iman. And the strengthening of iman is through good actions. There's, there's, they are part and parcel of each other. The more you increase in action, the more your iman will strengthen. There's no other way. There's no other way. You can't sit at home and have a magic formula to increase your iman. No. Yes, reading the Qur'an, that's also action. That will improve your iman and strengthen it. But the more you read, reflect, and the more good deeds you do, whether it's charity, whether it's helping somebody, whether it's doing your duties towards your family, your parents, your children, your, your wives and your husbands, whatever it is, if it's done with the sincerity for the sake of Allah, that's also a good deed. But good actions are necessary to strengthen iman. Iman is only increased and strengthened by good actions and it's only decreased right by sins and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are all in need of strengthening our iman we are all in need of strengthening our iman like the sahaba used to say come let's sit for a while to renew our iman to strengthen our iman what they meant was let's sit down discuss the akhirah remind ourselves of the day of judgment remind ourselves of, of Jannah and Hellfire. They used to say, the Prophet said, Iman surely gets worn out like a, like, like a, uh, like a garment. Once you wear a garment, a cloth, piece of cloth, for a while it gets worn out. Iman is like that. The Sahaba used to say to the Prophet what is it that when we leave you, when we're with you, our Iman is so high. When we leave you and go back to our houses and our daily occupations, our Iman goes down. Is it, does it mean we become hypocrites? The Prophet said, no, this is true Iman. Because if you had maintained that level all the time when you're with the Prophet, he said you would have seen, you know, you would have been like angels. So it's natural the Iman will go up and down, but the Iman will be strengthened through good deeds. And this is the month, inshallah, in Ramadan, we have the best opportunity throughout the whole year. This month, once it's gone, it's not going to come back until another year. So this is the best chance to strengthen our Iman, to increase our Iman, increase our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to do that, to understand his book, to pray with consciousness, to fast with consciousness, and to strengthen all our Iman, and to come out of Ramadan on a stronger, better basis. But don't despair. This is not about doing everything. You know, someone listening today might be thinking, Subhanallah, there's so much to do. No, you do whatever is within your capacity, but do it with quality 
and do it with conscious awareness. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Online. Stay connected to the East London Mosque. East London Mosque and London Muslim Centre would love to say thank you to the following businesses and charities for sponsoring our Ramadan Online 2021 program. Islamic Relief, Muntad Aid, Global Relief Trust, Penny Appeal, Muslim Aid, Human Relief Foundation, Muslim Burial Fund, Irani Taylor Solicitors, City Realtor, AWMA Architecture. The Muslim Centre has been providing vital services for our community for many, many decades, be that religious, social welfare or educational needs. During the COVID-19 lockdown, the masjid was shut for almost five months. And subhanAllah, what a testing period this was for many of us. During the lockdown, we managed to provide many vital services for the community. For example, online Islamic talks, advice and counselling by phone, food bank, medicine delivery and support for burials. As you know, government restrictions mean that we are currently operating at reduced capacity. This has meant, like many organisations, the mosque's income has significantly reduced. The mosque needs your support now more than ever. Please do consider setting up a regular donation and a standing order. You can do this by visiting our website. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum.